Well, as we're watching the end of the game here, uh, boy, what a thrilling game it turned out to be. A&M up 50-49 with 29 seconds to go. We'll just wait before we start the show uh, and watch the f finish of this game. And Florida played a horrible first half. 12 points is all they could score. So we'll keep an eye on that as we get ready to crank up the show tonight. Coming in just a moment, we'll have Scott Carter from University of Florida. We've got uh, our own Kyle um, checking in with us tonight. Give us an insight on his latest stories. Um, Kyle Curtis, and then, of course, this is David Bolton tonight. Uh, and uh, we'll have him on as well. So we should be getting a final score here momentarily. Again, 29.6 seconds to go. Uh, Florida trailing. Texas A&M at Texas A&M in a game that really has been all second half of Florida Gators. Couldn't get it together, couldn't throw it in the ocean. The first half scored 12 points, which I think is the fewest points scored this year uh, <clears throat> against Texas A&M by an SEC team. Colin Castle had one point. He's come back in the second half to uh, to really rally his team, and they played hard, but whether they can pull it out in this last moment or not, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Here we go back to the action. And then has the ball. Let's see what happens. And we'll start the program right after that. I want to see what goes on here. Uh, you're watching on ESPN as I am. The clock is ticking. And then has got the ball breaking it up court. Ball stumbles. Foul on Florida, I think, I believe. 23 seconds to go. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start the program. Looks like uh, a &M may have this one about put away. So, program's on the air. Buddy Martin show. It's a, it's a, it's a Wednesday night. Almost forgot what night it was. And we'll have lots to talk about, including yeah, one more time. Jaden Rashada. Frankly, I'm sick of it. And you probably are too. Yes, it's time again for Buddy Martin. Call him up and tell him what you're thinking. But be kind because he's doing the best he can. Better. Stronger. Faster. Alligators are ornery because they got all them teeth but no toothbrush. Hey, what if the voice calls while you're gone? Take a message. <laughs> Bye. You ready, champ? I'm ready for this my whole life. I'm incapable of small talk. <laughs> but that's why you love me, right? Kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. Winding down with 23 seconds to go, we'll hear from our commercial, uh, our sponsorship, and we'll be back uh, to talk more about what's going on on the TV screen and what's happening in the news. Jeffrey, what are you doing? Well, I'm joining the band, of course. Since Melvin Law is the official law firm partner of the Florida Gators, I want to help. Dad. We're litigators. Let's stick to helping people in the courtroom. Well, can we still hang out and jam a little bit? At Melden Law, we won't back down. All right, in action out at uh, College Station. What a game. 54-52 Texas A&M with only 2.5 ticks to go. Uh, and uh, it looks like this one, barring a miracle, is over in favor of A&M. Uh, Florida, too bad, played really hard to come back from a miserable first half and uh, and finally make a game out of it. Colin Castle, after virtually getting shut out, got one point. His timeout, I think, here with 2.5 seconds to go. Let's see what's going on here. Anyway, it's uh, Florida had won uh, three in a row. Uh, Texas had in, but three in a row. It looked like the, the, the Gators were beginning to turn the corner. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, things like this do happen. We'll watch this final 2.5 seconds. Scott Carter's on mine. I'm sure he's watching. Uh, we'll say good evening to Becky Smith Carlisle, who's back in the pole position tonight. Dan Bond, Go Gators from Dallas, Texas. Dan wrote a wonderful piece on Trinity Thomas coming up in the magazine this week. Be sure and check that out. You're right. Tough game to watch. That's right. Baskets are hard to make in the first half. 
I agree. They sure were, Dan, as well. So here we go. It's, uh, it takes forever. It takes like five minutes to play the last two seconds. Let's go ahead and get our friend Scott up. He's watching the game, I'm sure, too. And Scott Carter and uh, Scott, a lot of a lot of good play here, which unfortunately is going to go for naught. It looks like. Hey, buddy. Yeah, I mean, uh, unless there's a miracle here at the end. Uh, the the for second half was six, but this is kind of what we've come to expect of this team. They're, they they don't play well in the first half for some reason, but then they get going in the second half, but you just can't keep playing from behind on the road. Yeah, I heard somewhere, I read somewhere that this is the longest stretch, scrolling stretch since Billy Donovan's era. I didn't see wow. most of the first half. And if you watch it, they, have, they tend to get cold. And then uh, I like the young shooter. I like Ronnie Kugel, uh, Fudge sometimes, uh, and, you know, and Castleton, when he just takes the ball and takes over, that's when they're best. They're going to see what they can do here. Probably going to foul. Anyway, we'll go on with it. It's, it's a crazy. Uh, I, I think have to get, watch your TV. <laughs> Gator, Gator fans are, are just wanting some good dudes, you know. They really are. I want some good Well, dudes. yeah, I mean, they've won three in a row and got a little momentum. And, of course, the the game against A&M at home a couple of weeks ago, that was just an ugly one. Oh. Very difficult performance but then since then they've won three in a row and played well. and you're like okay maybe they're gonna start playing hot and mm-hmm. you know am is 4-0 in the league uh so you know if they win they're gonna be 5-0 so they're obviously uh, playing well in the sec but you know eventually you've got to win these kind of games to turn things around so yeah, still it's early too- in the season but i, I agree and, and and you know they they don't look that good they got one guy scored yeah. all the points tonight yeah Obviously, they, they play good defense. They hustle. They're a smart team. Uh, and they're just – they're not a good matchup in Florida. I don't know why. They seem like they haven't been for the last couple of years. That's a so. really tough matchup for Florida. And then um, let's see what happens here. Yeah, we'll watch this last two and a half seconds. And the uh, ball is in. And there's a shot. Foul. No, not foul. No, got the shot off. Lose 54-52. You know, that's just too bad. Again, another really good effort by Florida. Just a little too late, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm curious to see, like, how, uh, you know, first season for Golden. And it, it's just – it's a rebuild season for that program in a lot of ways, too. But, you know, you, the day – we live in a day and age until the rules change. I was here to coach – I can't remember who said this the other day, but it resonated – he said, you don't build programs anymore. You kind of just have to build one-year teams. And, you know, that's that's kind of true, but it's also, I think, not healthy for college athletics. Eventually, you have to get back to where, you know, some guys want to be in your program because they want to be at Florida or they want to be wherever they are, and they believe in the program, the coach, the tradition. But right now, it's like everybody's just trying to assemble these quick fist Fix, quick fix rosters and see what happens. It's, it's Calipari. It's a Calipari disease. He brought it in here. But, you know, you got to play. I remember, and you do too, we've been older on when they brought the three-point shot in. People yep. didn't, people thought, well, you know, that's not during basketball, the period. So one of the first to embrace him was Billy Donovan, and it worked extremely well for them. They had some guys knocking threes down and whatever. So I guess the smart coaches, Scott, they just have to, Go with the flow, right? Whatever it is. We will always adjust. I mean, and in basketball especially, we all know if you get one or two big-time players, that can change your program around pretty yeah. fast. Yeah. Like football. But, it, it, I, you know, I do miss the days where, you know, speaking of just in Florida terms, where, you know, guys come in and stay three or four years. And we saw how special that was with those uh, 04s. But will we ever see that again? I don't know, buddy. I really no, I don't. I think so. I mean, Probably uh, not. There's just yeah. too many factors out there. But but then you see what they have benefited from it. I mean, those guys still share, you know, friendships and moments today, you know. Yeah. So it's – but it's hard to sell that, I guess, in today's world. I guess. And it's so much – it was so much fun to watch. And I hate yeah. to be one of the guys harking back to yesterday. You know, that's – you know, people don't want to hear about that. And I get it. 
just like I didn't. People talk about the old time baseball players like Jimmy Fox and this guy and that guy. Who cares? I'd say, you know. Well, that's how I am now. A lot of the guys I care about, nobody else cares that's about. Good. But, but I mean, what fun it was that team, not just because they won, certainly that was a big part of it, but it was the t- style of basketball they played. I mean, when you see uh, Joe Kim Noah take a rebound and, and go to the center of the court and lead the fast break, in addition to Corey Brewer or whoever, my, you know, it, it was just such a fun game to watch. The way they, of course, they, they were winning championships, but it was fun. And, uh, and, uh, and unfortunately, uh, like like the old saying goes, it's hard to follow, hard act to follow. You know, been a hard it act is. to follow. It is. They had special moments. I I saw. You might find this interesting. I saw where the the Bulls are actually playing in Paris tomorrow against the Pistons. Really? Billy D's over in Paris, and Joe Kim is with him as the ambassador for the Bulls. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, he speaks the language, right? He speaks the language. Yeah. Right? He he speaks the language. yeah. yeah. He's from there. And Dan yeah. brings up something here. I saw this today about Chris Ford myself when you mentioned the yeah. three pointer that yeah. came into my mind. Yeah, yeah. Dan's a good man. I tell you this, Dan knows a bunch about gymnastics. He's got a piece coming up on Trinity Thomas. He's been going to the gymnastics meets out there since two thousand eight. And All right. he lives in Fort Worth, so there's so many of uh, uh, the national championships. You know, oh, yeah. uh, and, and uh, there, and he just started going, and he'll be at the one this year, the Norman. Uh, he really, and he talks about what a, he can, in his piece he's read, and he kind of, and I know this is probably a reach for a lot of people, he kind of tries to compare Trinity Thomas to Tiger Woods and the impact she's having on the sport. Uh, and and I, I don't know if that's an overstatement or not, but I mean, there's nobody like Tiger Woods, but I get the point. And I don't know enough about gymnastics to make a comment, but I trust Dan. I trust that he does know that. And so, uh, and 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 I did, did. Is it true that the other day that uh, Sean said on the on the air that uh, the toughest ticket now at Florida was not football but gymnastics? Well, you know, uh, buddy, it's getting close. I mean, I uh, I I've been going to those meets since I took this job. I'll be honest with you, I I didn't know much about the sport either, but I've yeah. really. Come- appreciate it and it's gotten so much better in the last seven eight years right and the SEC network is given to this exposure it's what it's the it's one of the fastest growing sports on tv there is and uh but mostly it's because of the athletes i mean like the other night at the odome auburn was there you had the, for the first time in history of the ncaa gymnastics meet you had four gymnasts who had medaled in the world championships. And of course you had the all around champion at the last Olympics in Sunni Lee. And he had the reigning NCAA champion in Trinity Thomas. So it was a star filled place. The place was packed a lot more than any basketball game I've been to this year. And it was loud. It was probably the loudest I've heard the Odoman since before the pandemic. So that kind of tells you right there what it was like. And you had those two tens. You know, uh, by uh, uh, yeah, ten. Trinity Thomas had a ten. Yeah, um, Suni Lee had a good performance for Auburn, but she obviously got a huge cheer when she was introduced as the Olympic champion. Yeah, uh, it was just one of those special nights, and you know she's she's competing just one uh, one more year at Auburn, so this was the only time she'll ever compete in the Odo. Yeah. She's going back to the Olympics, uh, starting after the season, so. Dan says she's extremely popular. And, and oh, yeah. So, so, anyway, so, yeah, I mean, Tony Thomas is just something special. And when she leaves here, man, she's going to leave a bunch of trophies behind there. And maybe she'll get that national championship. This would be wonderful. They That's apparently, the yeah, that, that, Dan says that they're really that good. They're really that good. So, I take his word for it. So, so we got to have something good to talk about, right? A little bit of a bummer. I'm gonna just um, own up to it. I'm really getting sick and tired of this whole thing with the Shada. I don't blame <laughs> it on anybody in particular, not even yeah. Shada. Yeah. Because we don't know the real story. Nobody talks about it, so you're kind of guessing. But I know I went to an event today at lunchtime with Commissioner Craig Curry, who received the uh, Rotary Memorial trophy for his contributions to golf and I his family a long time. I went there for luncheon and everybody was talking about, it. everybody was talking about the whole $13 million deal, you know, what it was going to end. And it's a little hurtful and it's a little bit embarrassing 
that it happened, and you don't even know who to blame or why it happened, except you know it happened. And uh, and you know I I'm not putting the black hat on anybody. I, I I just I think everybody can take some blame, but to me it's like a broken system. You know I, I liken it to trying to govern New York City, a place I love by the way. But it's ungovernable. Sure. You can't govern that place. I mean, you know, you do your best in each of the five boroughs and hope you get good cops and you people get treated fairly, whatever, and many good points about New York City. But it's the it, way it is now, it's unmanageable. It's ungovernable. It's beyond the wild, wild west. And there are no guidelines and no guardrails. We have nobody, nobody to go to. The NCAA, I have a judge friend today who said to me, well, don't you worry. The NCAA, the new guy's going to fix that. I said, no, he's not. Come on, man. The NCAA has no teeth. They're not going to do anything. So, anyway, I was talking about this so with my friend. I call him RB. He had the best comment. And sometimes a little humor helps, right? He oh, said, yeah. well, my friends and I were talking. My buddy Dan and I were talking today. I said, yeah. He said, uh, we got a plan on this $13 million. Yeah? He says, we're going to go out and get uh, the, the whole starting, the backups, in Alabama, the whole team on offense, pay them all a million apiece. And then if we have any money left over, we're going to go to Jordan Travis at Florida State and pay him the rest not to play. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty good plan, actually, if you think about it. Uh, There has been a little good news, but, you know, and I got to tell you, I don't like to criticize other media people because I know it's hard enough because we don't know much about this. And though you're in a real tough position to talk about it. But I, I, I don't like to call people, but I heard Andrea, Andrea Adelson today uh, on Fine Mom, who's usually oh. pretty good, usually pretty good. And I heard it and I thought, excuse me, she don't know what the hell she's talking about. You know, she's saying things that, and she didn't know she's trying to do her job on TV and talk about it, but she was so far behind on things. So I'll not sure if he's going to get his release and, you know, all this stuff and whatever, and this went wrong. Yeah. Yeah, we get it. It was embarrassing, and Billy and Scott and everybody was embarrassing. Gator Collective took it and took it to shorts, and they 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 hurt themselves a lot. A lot of pain to go around. But but Scott, we're in the media. The thing the thing about it is, and I don't criticize someone for trying to do their job and not and having such limited knowledge because I don't have any either. But don't pretend that you do, and don't go on the show and just talk and say things because this is what you heard. You can't write this story with any real sources. I get it. You have to kind of have some conjecture. But it's just getting to me to be, it's a hangover now. Where How long is Florida going to be penalized for this? And it seems like it's been a year already. It's only been a couple of weeks since it happened. So I don't know. That's just because just, I'm just venting a little bit, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I think we're all kind of tired because it has drug out here a little bit. Um Bottom line is, buddy, uh, it goes back to the system is broken. And I don't know, you know, I wish I knew the solution. I wish someone knew the solution because, you know, I see all these college athletic leaders talk about there being problems. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they all say we need to do this, we need to do that, and no one's doing anything to really get a handle Mm -hmm. on it. And all these regional uh, divisions, there's conference divisions, but – it's either going to just continue to be like this, and yeah. unfortunately for skaters, yeah, yeah. they stuck in it, and they they got they're the ones being kicked or dragged through the mud this week. Yeah. I get it, yeah. But it's going to be every big school or almost all of them eventually if the system stays in place as it is, because there's going to be more and more bad actors getting involved in this. Yeah, and for them, it's only about one thing, man. It's all about the dollar. It doesn't. They don't care about. Which school, what tradition, mm-hmm. or, you know, it's all about money. And uh, it's just where we are. I hope that this Rashada situation, now that, you know, he has requested his release, and I don't have any doubt that Florida will grant the release. Uh, it, it, it behooves them to do that. There's no good reason why they wouldn't. Um, and, you know, that will hopefully put this in the rearview mirror and move forward. And, you know, there, there's you're right, buddy. I think. I think there's a lot of truth. There's some truth in what we know, and there's also some some people driving their agenda to, to the media. They're getting their side of it out there, but it just shows you behind the scenes 
you could tell there was some real mudslinging going on. And some people wanted this out, some people wanted this out. And that's how a story like this comes to fruition. And I don't know if we'll ever know all the details, but if we ever do, I'll make a good 30 for 30, right? I guess so. And the other thing is, it's the first real test case. You know, I mean, that's the thing, is that now because it is one that went sideways, there are going to be more of these. Florida was the first. They got egg on their face. They're going to have to live it down. And we're talking about this, about this. Here's the thing. Guess what? We're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. College football is a business. We knew that, but never at this level. And I like it that somebody buying your house. And someone else uses this example today, but it's, you do a real estate deal and you got someone coming and says, I'll give you over what you're asking, right? Well, great. Let's get this thing going. And you got to go to close. And the guy says, no, nah, I don't think so. I don't, don't want to do this. And it falls through. Well, it's about the money and about the deal, you know? And now when yeah. you start talking about something like this, and I don't know how real the 13 million, it didn't come out of nowhere. Somebody had that number in mind. Who offered it is another question. But uh, the point is, is that, that when you're in that kind of world, those numbers, big deals happen, the high rollers, you cannot trust a lot of them to do what they said they're going to do. They just don't. That's how they do business. You know, and so, so if you're going to go there, you better be prepared to take your licks and realize that business sometimes is hard and mean and it's difficult. So this is what the world we're in right now. And we'll see. I'm hopeful we're going to be able to see soon, see what's going on with, with Billy Napier's uh, quarterback situation and you know, what's going on. I was hoping, I, I see that the, the kid from LSU now, unfortunately, is going to Ole Miss. So um, uh, uh, Walker Howard, who I thought would be a terrific fit here, uh, and uh, he's, he's apparently going to go with Ole Miss. So uh, we'll see you now. I'm hearing also that Florida is going to pick up a couple of quarterbacks in the uh, may, maybe uh, in, uh, in, in a second signing day. You know, guys, or maybe a transfer opponent quarterback. But I will say one thing. They got a good beef lineup of, of beefy offensive linemen. They average about 6'3 and about 315 or 320 average, I think. That's with the in the center who's only like 310 or so uh, as a gunk one. And so here's what I recommend. I got a nickname for them. You, I'm going to let you use this, all right? <laughs> these, these, these big guys – it's the the I seventy five Road Graders G R A T O R S Road Graders okay yeah, so that'll be the name and so all else fails if you don't get the quarterback you want run the damn ball you know, well, you know, we you know we have, right? we had, they have some good running backs we know yeah. that yeah you're right the guy they picked up today or it made official today Damian George from Alabama yep. six six. 40. Yeah. Cameron Bates is a big guy, the freshman last year. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, it's an era where it's almost like we're in this period right now where it's really, you just, if, if you miss on a player or something goes sour, like with Rashada, guess what? You don't have to wait another year to sign a guy. You can go out and really yeah. get somebody in the yeah. summer yeah. Uh, if you want. And I mean, there would definitely be another quarterback on the roster besides Merce, Miller, and oh, Brown. Of course. Of course. Of course. Uh, there may be two more. But but right now, you know, it's just like you said earlier, it kind of stings a little bit how it played out publicly. But, you know, one player, you know, we'll see how it goes. If he, if he wins the Heisman Trophy and leads some team to two national championships, yeah. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, well, well we, Gators really missed. But I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, you know, there's always Stetson Bennett, the outlier. You know, yeah, there's always I mean, those guys. Yeah. But he was not a uh, guy who was commanding a lot of money when he no. signed. How about he a dollar, a- dollar three eighty? Maybe if you're lucky. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so we hope. All right, Scott. So I guess we're all getting anxious to see spring ball here pretty quick and uh, see what the lineup looks like. And what I'm hearing from this group, like today, I said they, they all pretty much said the same thing. I like what Billy Napier is doing. I think he's going to do it the right way. I think he's a he's a tr- terrific man of character and all that stuff. But boy, oh boy, this whole thing was so embarrassing, and we all got egg on our faces over it. So just going to have to take the beating for a while and go through it and see who whose turn is it next because it's coming. That's for sure. Well, yeah, somebody else is going to you know get burned, 
and it's part of the sport that we're going to have to live with until there's some true parameters set in the NIL yeah. pay for play space. It was never meant the NIL in some ways works pretty well in some of the uh, lesser sports or the maybe the non revenue sports. Right. But in football, men's basketball, we all knew from the start it was going to turn into pay for play. Yeah. And it, it, it has on a, on a kind of a level that I didn't know it would kind of reach so fast. But, so they're gonna have to uh, they're gonna have to address that. But as far as Billy, I mean, you know, he's a what a little over a year in his tenure. Um, I just know how this works. You know how it works. Uh, if you have some good come along pretty soon, whether it's on the recruiting trail or you start off next season hot. I mean, these kind of stories fade into the background pretty quickly. But at the same time, I mean, people will use this against him for a little while while they can until i think there's more and more cases out there in the in the public domain um yeah. but yeah it was just it was unfortunate on a lot of levels you know well i'm thankful for you i'm trying to explain to people and i understand it's difficult to grasp that you can't it's not the fault of i know mike biaki had to come where he uh scoring and strickland and others and billy uh, it really isn't the fault of those two guys. They're part of the broken system. They have to take the heat, but it wasn't because of the failure on their part. And people say, well, why don't they come out and talk about it? Because they can't. That's the problem. They can't talk about it. So please explain to people why there's no press conference on all this. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, according to the NCAA rules, I mean, schools can't be directly involved in, you know, negotiations or anything of that nature, which is itself a problem because, you know, at this point, what's happening is, you know, you know, you these athletic departments, which are responsible for, you know, oversight on the football and basketball program and all these other teams. Well, now, right now, you've got these third third party entities like Gator Collective or Gator Guard or whoever, you know, trying to work in that space to to put things together behind the scenes. And it's just a, it's just not a sustainable or even a smart uh, system. And you wonder, like, I mean, this has opened a lot of people's eyes, I think, how absurd some of the system is right now. Again, I don't know what this – well, I kind of know what the ultimate solution is going to be if we ever get to that point. But no one's willing to cross that bridge yet. But I, I don't see how there's any way that eventually – I mean, there's going to be a structure in place that resembles more like pro sports, at least for your football and, and you basketball. At least you have rules in the NFL. Yeah, so that's yeah. the only way that – or you can just have, continually have stories like this that Florida experience. You can have it at Texas A&M mm-hmm. next month and Alabama over the summer. And it's just mm-hmm. going to flood the new cycle of college football. Mm-hmm. And that's good for nobody. <laughs> So uh, it, it's it's just fascinating to see, and I don't know I don't know enough about these collectives, like these schools. Yeah. I mean, have they yeah. even vetted collectives? Obviously not. I mean, you, to me, you would want people in charge of those who you really are yeah. familiar with and have a relationship with. But I don't know how true that is around college athletics, the ones that exist. Yeah. Uh, so you know, again, it is just a. It's certainly a not just a uf problem it's it's a college athletics problem and i understand gator fans being in the in the dumps on this one i get it yeah. but we're like you said we're going to continually see and see in situations like this arise scott carter fartergators.com he writes good stuff you should get on the read if you haven't thank you scott appreciate your time my friend all right have a good night buddy thank you let's go right over to the orange and blue room get like a switch and see one of our Active reporters, the guy's been churning and burning recently. He might know what's going on. I don't know. We don't know what's going on, but Kyle Curtis joins the program. What's up, Kyle? How are you? Confused, confused, confused. Um, are we all? I guess we should update, folks. Florida lost a tough basketball game there. At the end, uh, missed the three. Was it, What was the final? Was it 50 49? I don't even know. Uh, but anyway, they 54 lost. 52. 54 52. Yeah, I didn't write the last after score, no. scoring after scoring yeah. 12 points yeah. in the first half, which I think is our lowest since 1966. Yeah, and also the, the least points scored against Texas AM by an SEC team in a half, too. 
So, uh, yeah, so uh, you've been working this beat pretty hard, my man. You've done a good job. You had a good baseball story a couple of days ago, uh, and uh, you worked on the story on the offensive line. The uh, Have you gotten any, 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 any traction with our nickname, the I-75 Road Graders? I know. You had to clear that one up for me um, on the text messages. Um, yeah, I think that's a great way to kind of put it. We, it, I, I I think I read a comment here the other day about how um, 300 pounds for an offensive lineman, especially in the SEC or in the NFL, was um, big. You know, 20 20 some years ago, and now we're we're looking um, next year to have you know the whole offensive line, big um, heavy side guys who are able to you know block for ETN and Montreal Johnson, who right now looks to be the uh, bulk of the uh, 40 Gators offense for the upcoming season. So. For the offensive line, it's uh, super exciting. And then um, I think, you know, we've got some big gets here with Micah Mazkua and Damian George, obviously, that's, I think, been um, kind of shadowed a little bit by this whole Jaden Rashada saga. But uh, I, those are two massive gets, especially with, you know, some people that were headed out of the program. Um, so it, being able to add that seniority, especially on the offensive line here, I think is going to be really big. Just to try to clear this up for John Terrell, um, of course Billy Napier is involved, but Billy Napier is not the not making all the fig putting all the figures together, and you know I'm not going to try to defend anybody because I don't know enough about it to do that, but it, you know it, I, it's it, it's also and again I, stuff I've been told I'm reluctant to repeat it was uh, obviously he wanted Rashada, and he, they went after him, got him from Miami. They put some numbers. I don't know who put the numbers in. I have no idea. But the 13.2 or 13.8, may whatever it was, which, by the way, right off the bat, everybody thought, that doesn't sound right. That's way too much. I don't know. Maybe Or maybe that's the going price. You know, you never know. Uh, and then they wound up, uh, you know, obviously having to eat that because, again, we're just talking what we think we've heard. We don't have any idea what we're talking about here, but they can come up with the money. They being, I guess, Gator Collective and all those Gator, and all those guys over there who I know a little bit, and uh, another third party involved. So, I, it sounds to me like Billy was left holding the bag. If in fact, I'm also told Billy didn't want that number. I don't know. So I, I, it's, it's just hard to know. And like I said, it's kind of like working in, in big business today. It's big boy business. You never know. All right. So catch me up real quick on what's going on. What you're hearing about? Uh, they're adding players. They got a few more in the portal. What's the latest number today? I was trying to get a. a Woody Page asked me for a, a nose count. How many did Florida have in the transfer portal? What was the number you sent me? Yeah, so we got 24 guys who have entered the transfer portal from last year's roster, and 20 of those guys have found new homes. Um, there are still four guys who still have not been able to or I just haven't announced it yet and uh it, it, they're still able to come back to the university if you know Napier allows that and stuff like that so um Ethan White happens to be one of those guys uh the big offensive tackle guy who a lot of people thought could step in and you know make an impact this year so um still kind of crossing our fingers on some of those guys but we've like I said with Mike and Matt's Kuo, we've got gotten um um, Damian George, we've gotten, you know, different playmakers who are able to come in and uh, make an immediate impact. All right, we'll keep an eye on it. Kyle's watching closely, following it closely. You can read him and Gator Bait. Uh, he's got, what do you got this week? You got a couple pieces. This week, this week, I'm, uh, I'm, I actually was able to kind of do a feature on the uh, Gator Gymnastics, who I think have been absolutely wonderful so far. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm, uh, I focused on the uh, Super Wild Card Weekend, and we actually had Gators in all six of uh, all six of the teams this week. So yeah. I dove in a little bit on that and uh, highlighted some of the Gators that played in there. We had a few nice touchdowns for yeah. some ex Forty Gators, and uh, you know Trinity Thomas has been doing her thing um, on all parts of the gymnastics floor. So yeah. it was well, kind of cool to, you know, dive into that. Yeah, you and Don, Matt, Dan Bond both have a piece on Trinity, but we'll have them different times. All right, my man, good job. We'll also meet uh, Matt Quadraro this week at our new intern. He's got some pieces. Thank you, man. Good job. Keep up the good work, Kyle. Appreciate it, all right? Thank you. I appreciate it. Kyle have a good night. Curtis, thank you, buddy. All right, we're going to go right to our special guests, and we're going to play the 
spot for him, our special guest. Always glad to have him on these nights. David Molto will be here, and here's who's sponsoring this segment. Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life, and the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. All right, thanks very much, Titan MRI. Just a short drive from here, no problem. They take uh, take reservations right up to the day you have the MRI. So thank you, Jeff Cardoza. Let's go to the orange and blue room now and see our buddy David Bolton, who's been busy, boy, if he has some great tail playoff football, David. How are you, buddy? Good. Nice to see you again, Dave. It's nice to be seen. You don't What's like David. On? You don't like David, though. I don't know. You like David. I like David too. So. I am a I am a David guy. Yeah, you know, yeah, it just like it. and yeah. if somebody were to just call me Dave, you yeah. know, you roll with it. But yeah. my favorite is when somebody says, "Which do you prefer, Dave or David?" And I go, "Well, I prefer David." And they go, "Okay, Dave." <laughs> well, Letterman did pretty well with it, right? So exactly. it worked for him. Well, you look. Your room looks good tonight. Got new lighting and everything, man. Wow. Well, I just, I just, I just put the backlighting on. Wow, for you, you it's know. like real television almost. Well, not quite. But you know, while the while the MRI ad was going, I figured I'd backlight it. <laughs> there you go. Very good, sir. Well, we have plenty to talk about. I must just give you the menu and say what do you choose to talk about. But let's hold off on NFL a little bit and get your right. view from thirty thousand feet. As I said earlier in the program. Uh, <clears throat> that uh, watched an interview with Andrea Adelson. I don't like to criticize other media people because I know it's hard to do at my job. But I, I was a little bit disappointed in, the, in what she portrayed as her report on the whole situation with the Shada. Not from the standpoint of who was right and who was wrong, but she didn't know anything. And by the way, I don't either, but I knew more than she knew. And this is a dangerous time for us because... We're having to talk about things that we have no documentation about. We the smell test is all we got, and every now and then we get a, we get a, some kind of story about a guy not coming. So anyway, what's your whole? Give me your take on the Rashada thing. How bad is okay. it from the standpoint of for Florida and, and and the national perception, which I know sucks. Well, first things first, uh, they need it. So right now, I mean, the quarterback room's looking pretty thin. So it, it's damaging just to the program because he was a five-star quarterback recruit and they, they need one of those. So that's the obvious. Here's the one thing I would throw out there, because you're right, buddy. I, I mean, you know, there might be seven people who really know the truth here and none of them are commenting publicly. Here's my theory about things like this. If someone is reporting something which is just blatantly false – somebody would come out and go, this is not true. Like if the Florida collective was not at fault here, okay, if they actually had the money, if they were living up to whatever the deal was, all right, I know if I was part of the Florida collective, I'd be racing to a microphone. I'd be calling up the Buddy Martins of the world and I'd be getting my story out because I don't want this to cause any collateral damage. So while I have no idea what the truth is, right now I'm assuming that whatever the deal was between Recruit and the Collective, the Collective didn't hold up their end of the bargain. Mm -hmm. Now, I would be surprised if it was $13 million over four years. Mm -hmm. That seems a little high. Mm -hmm. But listen, I also know that, you know, Bryce Young made $3 million last year, was the report. May at North Carolina was offered $5-plus plus million to transfer right. to other schools. And it wouldn't surprise me if he's making that at North Carolina to come back for one more year. So is a five-star recruit on the open market, $3 million a year on average? Yeah, could very well be, especially at that position. I don't know. The one assumption I'm making right now, which can come back to bite me, is, is that Rashada and the Gators marriage is not going to happen. And the reason seems to be whatever the handshake deal was, one side can't hold up its end of the deal 
and that side seems to be Florida's. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah, we but, don't I mean, know. We do not but know. It, but, buddy, here's my thing. And if you were associated with the Florida Collective, never mind the Florida Athletic Department, and I know it's touchy grounds, you know, you're not supposed to work in cahoots, but, you know, come on, we all know what's going on here. I would at least be saying, listen, the kid changed his mind. You know, the kid thought one thing, we thought another. The kid now doesn't want to come here. But I would at least get the word out that – our word is good to future recruits. Our word is good. If in fact, our word is to good. If we didn't screw up this deal, I would be getting, okay, that out there. Well, this guy's David Hunter. Well, our regular says 13 million is peanuts. The celebrities like David Moulton. <laughs> <laughs> David, very true story. And somebody was just saying we need a call in part. Yeah. So in my early days in Southwest Florida of doing a show, yeah. I mentioned something about, you know, we don't make nearly what you th- is you think we make. Yeah. And at the right. time, at the time I was doing local TV sports and doing a three hour daily sports mm-hmm. talk show. And some guy says, okay, how much do you make? And I go, eh, I'm not comfortable telling you what I make. And he says, well, how about if I guess? And I go, I'll tell you what. If you're in the area code, mm-hmm. I'll I'll divulge what I make. And the guy says, $700,000. <laughs> A lifetime? <laughs> and I said, did you say 700000 And he said, yeah. I said, sir, I can promise you if you took a zero off that, I don't think that. <laughs> Uh, it's because you're so good at what you do, David. People think you have all these great gigs, and yeah, I, I uh, you know, I, I'm really going to. I want to flesh this out of my system, to be honest with you, and move on to other things. But you can't, because it's, it's in the news every day. And if you do a show, I would like to do a call-in show. We might wind up doing one night a week a call-in show. Which we could do. You do a call well, show. But buddy, like you'd be able to flush this if Walker Howard had committed tonight to Florida. Right. Exactly. And that's you know, what seriously, I was, what it's I was like, well, well, for. Okay, that was the okay, story you know. I've been working on for about a week. And I had a good tip and a good interview information on it with a guy who knew the family and told me that Billy knew the family. And I looked up some interviews. I might have talked to you about it last Thursday, last week. I mean, it was Wednesday. Uh, but where Billy, I mean, his dad, Walt Kyra's dad, Jamie, who played quarterback at LSU, I heard the interview last summer when he said, after he'd gone to LSU, Walker had, saying um, that, uh, you know, uh, asked about the NIL deals. And he said, well, the NIL deals is not going to decide for us. He says, uh, but he said that we had some good conversations with people, and you, you have to get serious with the people about coming before you talk money. And he says, uh, and he says, of course, he lives in Lafayette, mm-hmm. where Billy coached. Right. And he said, I think the world of Billy Napier. That's what his dad said. Think the world of Billy Napier. And he was the first one to offer his son a scholarship at Louisiana, of course. So, uh, so there was some thinking that maybe they had a shot. Well, well, yeah, and not only that, they have a clear need. In fact, yeah. if you think about it, I mean, he's going to Ole Miss. There is an established starter there who's yeah. ahead of him. There's not yeah. an established starter yeah. ahead not of yet. him in yeah. Florida. I, I mean, yeah. I would just, like, if I was in his family and he turned to me and say, where would you go? And I'm like, well, if you want to get on the field first, yeah. I'd go to Gainesville. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they say he's a terrific kid. I don't know the young man, but the people I know well, and people I think the world, I think the world of the family. And so, so let me just say one thing. I want to get this on the record, and then since you brought it up, I'm going to go ahead and say what I haven't said. I know the people at Gator Collective pretty well, and I worked hand in hand with them. Never received a penny, by the way, from them, and lining up some interviews. And we had a series of 22 interviews starting last fall, actually in December, with Gator athletes that they arranged. They yeah. worked out nicely. We got to know people and talk to people. And we've had conversations with Eddie Rojas and and Jen and uh, Grotto, Gro, uh, Grasso and the whole team and, and my friend Ben Troop does a little work for them. So we were hoping that they would be able to be the, the deal. 
Well, I hate to say it, but it sounds like they crumbled under the pressure. I don't know why other than the fact that 13 men, how can any group like that raise? And I guess they were going to one booster to get it. And they said no. And so the deal crumbled because of that. And I don't know. I don't know how much Billy was involved in that decision, although they're not supposed to legally be involved. I'm told he was not comfortable with that figure, but I'm sure if he had to spend it, and like you said, who knows how much quarterbacks go for it. Drake May was going to be a $5 million man. We've seen you know three and $4 million quarterbacks. If that's the number, David, if you're buying a house, and you say, well, I only paid 50000 for my house 25 years ago. Yeah, but today it's worth 500000 you know, you, 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 might, you might be shocked, but that's sticker shock. And I, I got sticker shock. I thought, well, maybe that's what they're paying. I don't know. So something went wrong behind the scenes, and I just talked to one of my friends, reporter, Alan Taylor from The Athletic, who's a very good reporter. He says he's hearing that they're going to just redo that whole Gator Collective thing with the Gator Guard. They're gonna, and, and, and obviously it was embarrassing to everybody involved. So it's not a good look, but – you but I no, will say, it, it, one recruit in which a deal falls apart, you can pick up the pieces. Yes, I agree. You can you, you can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Yeah. It's one recruit. Mm -hmm. It hurts because it's a high-profile mm -hmm. five-star quarterback, and until you replace him in the quarterback room, it will be out there. But mm -hmm. that story literally, buddy, could have been done as of five hours ago, if Walker Howard had said yeah. Florida instead of Ole Miss. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, and again, I know people are saying, like, Matt, move on and stop talking about it. Matt, you can't stop talking about the news, okay? The news is today that it looks like he's being granted, he's going to be granted his release. We'll stop well, talking about has, it. Florida yeah. has historically granted athletes in yeah, all and will. sports. If they, they, if they want yeah. out. They, they've let them out. Are so. you talking about it on your show, David? Sure. Of, of course. course you are. That's my point to Matt. Matt, in this business, you I don't set the subjects. The subjects are made by the news reports. So sorry about well, that. If you're bored, I'm sorry. You have to go someplace else. Well, but, uh, and, and Matt, the other thing, which, you know, let's face it, the, the whole college sports landscape is so fluid. But think about where we were a year ago versus where we are at this moment in time versus where we could be six to 12 months from now. The thought was a year ago that Florida was actually the leader in NIL in the state. Yeah. You know, they established the Gator Collective, the whole deal. Yeah, Ruiz was coming in in Miami with his money, but, you know, this Gator Collective, this is this was the – everybody was going to follow how Florida put this together. Well, you know, okay, right, right now they're – it's not working out as well as they had hoped. They'll retool. These are smart people. There's a lot of money associated with University of Florida grads and alumni. They'll figure it out. Yeah, They will. Just right now, it, it, you know, they had a hiccup. I was doing a show over the weekend. A friend of mine said, market correction. Market yeah. correction. That's what it is. You move on. No so, doubt. No so, doubt. anyway, so for Matt and those who get tired of here, I, I'm frankly tired of the subject, too. But I'm going to keep talking about it as long as it's in the news. Well, and Michael's go. right, by the way. Michael's right. I mean, think about. I mean, recruiting deals fall through all the time. Now mm -hmm. there's just going to be a financial component that we're aware of. Yeah. I mean, you know, buddy, and I know I've mentioned this before, but the word was 13 years ago Mississippi State was getting Cam Newton. Mm -hmm. There was a price tag on it and everything. And we all know. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mississippi State's price tag was 180. Is what yeah. the word yeah. you know yeah. word was, and then all of a sudden Cam ended up at Auburn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. And so now, instead of that being yeah. behind closed doors it's and rumor and innuendo and what have you, that's literally going to be all out in the open. No doubt. No doubt. My friend Randy said today at luncheon, "I got an idea. Let's take that thirteen million dollars and go and get all of Alabama's second string and divide it, and then what we got left over, let's let's pay Jordan Travis not to play at FSU." <laughs> I thought that was a really good idea. All right, let's talk a little NFL. One of your beats that you cover. All right. Boy, I'm going to tell you, I playoff football is just hard to beat. I mean, you know, I complain about the NFL sometimes. I get a little bored with it and whatever. But this past week was phenomenal. And I got all these, I'm mean, looking at all these games. Which one? Buffalo 34, Miami 31. What a game that was. Giants 34, Vikes 24. 
Bengals 24, Rams 17. Jags 31, Chargers 30. Four picks in the first half, and most guys would have been on the bench by then, David. And what a night Trevor Lawrence had. So pick out one of those to talk about. You've seen these games. Well, and the funny thing is the first game, Seattle-San Francisco was a one-score game in the beginning of the fourth quarter. Now, Niners ended up winning and winning comfortably, but at the start of the fourth quarter, it was, I think, Niners by six. So five of the six games met the threshold of what networks anyway Mm -hmm. consider a good game, which is, is it a good game at the start of the fourth quarter? Right. And five of the six met that, and then the Cowboys and Bucks. You know, it was a story because Dallas hadn't won a road game in 30 years. And, of course, Mm -hmm. is this the end for Tom Brady? So even it being, you know, such a wide margin, the storylines were still uh, very apparent. Um, Listen, I think the run comes to an end for Jacksonville and Kansas City because I don't think you can keep being this sloppy this early Mm -hmm. and keep coming back and winning games. But, and David, you, you... hit on it right here not only what jacksonville has done but then the legend of trevor lawrence taking he and a handful of teammates and their significant others and making a reservation waffle house nobody 20 nobody at a waffle house (laughs) okay his his first time he never been he never been well is it he hadn't been or some of his teammates he had had never never been been. his wife said and that some of his team i guess i don't know the story but but it's a, it's a good story, and these uh-huh. are little stories like this that make the people so human. It's like the story I talked totally. about last week when Billy Napier walked in by, behind a guy who was looking in the office in a window at some guy's dad and said, you'd like to come in and see this? He didn't know him. He said, yeah, and he took him in for the tour inside, you know, and, it, and took a picture with him. It's just human. Those little human stories really make these totally. guys seem real, and I love totally. that Waffle House story. You're right. Yeah, it's fantastic. I know Scherf, the guard, said he had never been and a few others, and I guess it was Trevor's wife that called up and yeah. made the plans and what have you. They said, what? Reservation? What do you exactly. mean? Exactly. <laughs> but then once you tell them who it's going to be, they go, oh, no, we'll clear it out. Oh, no, we'll make room for you. <laughs> Good Absolutely. Story. Good story. So, yeah. um, I mean, listen, normally three out of the four home teams win in the division round. So I guess we have to ask ourselves, which road team do we give the best chance of winning this week? I think most of us would say Cincinnati. You know, Cincinnati, how ironic. The first 15 games of the year, they had the same offensive line start. Yeah, two, now, right? And now in the last three weeks, they've lost three of their starters to injury. Wow. And then Buffalo, who quite frankly has been very sloppy ever since the DeMar Hamlin injury. I yeah. mean, they have. They were fortunate. I mean, they needed two kickoff returns to beat new england and they were very fortunate to get past miami yeah. if miami had a quarterback who was competent and he, a head coach he played well he in. played well for a guy yeah. who hadn't played any, for not having played i mean when you I, I guess him. it would have helped if his coach could get a play in in less than a minute yeah that's that, true. that would help that's true that is true i'm gonna get you to pick these games coming up this weekend but just a couple more things about the nfl and i love the new expedited replay man that was good that makes a whole bunch of difference. And, you know, because yeah. you're screaming at the TV, make the damn call. You've been there for 10 minutes, you know. And I, and obviously now they're only watching one game at a time as opposed mm-hmm. to if you're in right. the control room True. in New York. True. You could have six or eight games on in Good a 1 point. o'clock window. Yeah. So I get it. But, you know, is it worth it, quite frankly, to assign one person per game? Instead of having one or two people working in the mm-hmm. control room, how about you have eight? I mean, I, I don't know. I think these games are important enough. I mean, the I'll networks say. pay about – they pay about $12 billion a year to televise them. I think that they're important. we got to move this sucker along. I know that, and I love the expedited replay. Right. Uh, it saves coaches' challenges. It saves frustration for the fans watching. Yeah. Um, I love it. I do too with you on that. Okay, give me a little inside baseball here. Let's have inside football. All right. Jaguars hit Chief 430s on Saturday. You said the Chiefs, the Jaguars got to stop making mistakes realistic. I don't know the point spreads. You could probably cite Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Eight and right. a half. What's going to happen in that game? Uh, Chiefs are going to whack them. Uh, this is a big step up for Jacksonville that they're not ready for. The Chiefs ended the year playing very strong football. Uh, defensively, they've got guys that can get after Trevor. Um, 
Jacksonville's got to get off to a fast start, and they have not gotten off to a fast start in a game in a month. Um, you know, I think this is where the ride ends. They've had a hell of a ride. What have they won? Six in a row. Um, I, I'm laying the points with the Chiefs. And Giants-Eagles, 8 o'clock Saturday on Fox. Giants looking better. They're getting good play out of their quarterback. Uh-huh. Eagles are a tough team to beat. They are. They're very deep. They've got a couple of guys injured, including Hertz. I mean, he's not banged up. He's injured. And their right tackle is injured. But I think it's a bad matchup for the Giants, and I'm a Giants fan. Even if the Giants play a clean game, the Eagles have two Pro Bowl corners in Slay and Bradbury, and they have two number one wide receivers in Brown and Smith. And the Giants, even though they got a Dory Jackson back at corner, I don't think it match up with the Eagles receivers. So, buddy, unless Jalen Hurts is really subpar and plays a C game or worse, I just think the Eagles have too much for the Giants. The Giants outside of Saquon um, don't really have anyone explosive that I think can – help them get in the mid to upper 20s where I feel they'll need to be yeah. to beat Philly. I think the more, ride ends in Philly. A little more consistency out of their wide receivers would help too. Uh, by the way, uh, 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 I know a lot of people like the Bengals here, but boy, I sure hate to see that Bills story go away. But Bengals and Bills, 3 o'clock Sunday. Uh, the Bills story has been so good. I'm rooting for them to keep going. What do you got here? Uh, I'm taking the Bengals, and I, you know, I mean, we'll all be rooting for the Bills for the obvious reasons, but I'm taking the Bengals, even though Baltimore did a number on them last week. Baltimore outplayed them for large stretches of the yeah. game. Yeah. I don't like Buffalo's defense without Von Miller. You mm-hmm. take a look. They have not been anything special. Uh, they can't get consistent pressure on the passer. I don't think you can blitz Joe Burrow. You'll get carved up, and so I think – Josh Allen needs to play a clean game for Buffalo to win. They've been unable to play a clean game here for a while. Buddy, for them to be one of the three best teams in the league, which they are, they have turned it over three or more times, five times this year. I mean, basically, one out of every three games they play, they turn it over three or more times. And so that, to me, is not a fluke. That's who they are. And so I'm rooting for Buffalo, but at the end of the day, I, I think Burrow and Cincinnati, they protect the football. Joe doesn't normally give it away, and because of it, I'll take the Bengals in a close one. All right, one more, and i got to get a Tom Brady comment. Cowboys at 49ers. Cowboys suddenly rejuvenated, just embarrasses, embarrass the Bucs. Uh, what do you got here? 49ers look awfully good on defense. They do. I will say this. Take a look closely at who the Niners have beaten under Brock Purdy. It, nobody, quite frankly. They've played very few teams that we would consider to be very good this year. They, they've played a very soft schedule. This, you could argue, is the best team they've played. And Dallas will come in with a little bit of confidence. I think it will help Dallas that they played the Niners last year in the playoffs because it's the exact same system. And San Francisco ran the ball down their throat last year. Buddy, that's the game to me. If Dallas has one weakness, it's defending the run. And they are going to make Dallas defend the run. I think close game, I love the Niners' advantage in the kicking game. Robbie Gould versus Brett Maher after what we just saw Monday night. Give me the Niners and a late field goal. Speaking of field goals... One of the dumbest comments I've heard came from Todd Bowles, who's scapegoating Ryan Suckup, who's been Mr. Consistency. And I guess they're talking about cutting or have cut him. Thanks to everything in the past three years, Ryan, basically. But we need longer field goals. Ha! Who doesn't? Come on, man. Suckup's been really consistency, in my opinion. All right, Tom Brady, should he go or should he stay? Well, I mean... I'm going to try to take Monday out of the equation. All right. Is he good enough to still be a starting quarterback in the league? Yes, of course. But he's only going to go somewhere where he thinks he has a chance to legitimately compete for the Super Bowl. 
how many of those teams have an opening at quarterback? Buddy, unless something happens in Miami, to be brutally honest with you, I don't know if there's a place for Tom to go. We all knew three years ago that Tampa Bay was a team that was sleeping. They won seven games with Jameis turning it over 50 times. 50 times. And they won seven games. We all knew if a good quarterback walked in, they'd win 10 or 11. Tom Brady walked in. And next thing you know, they're playing for and winning a Super Bowl. Yeah. I don't know if there's a team poised like that for him to go to. All right? I mean, listen, the ex-wife and the kids have already moved to Miami. That's clearly where she and they are retiring. So he apparently is retiring there also. You know, he's got a son in New York. I mean, so to me, buddy, the Jets and the Dolphins at this stage of his life, I don't see him doing a year in Vegas. I just don't. I don't see him doing a year in Nashville. And unless something opens up in Miami or with the Jets that he's like, you know what, I want to do this. I really want to do this. If I had to put money on it right now, buddy, I'd say he retires. Because I just don't think a Tampa Bay scenario is out there for him this spring the way it was out there for him three years ago. On the other hand, he could get drunk and a couple of his boys, and you never know. So right? He might sure. be better for him to stay right where he is. Uh, the great David Moulton, you can hear him in the mornings if you're lucky enough to be able to get him. You can get him online. You can get him if you happen to be driving through Lake City and Live Oak around up there, Jacksonville. Jacksonville's own David Moulton. How about that? Jacksonville's uh, uh, own. Uh, uh. <laughs> Yep, at a Waffle House near you. <laughs> well, soon to be coming to Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. We'll, uh, by the way, one of the guys on the SEC network, I forget which one, the basketball, said over the weekend, I went to Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. It's the best restaurant in the SEC. So, go to find out for yourself, my friend. Nice. David, it's great having you on. Good stuff as always. Enjoy the playoffs. and look forward to trying to get you back next week. Always love having you on the show, Mr. Moulton. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, David. David Moulton will say good night to David, and they will say good night to you as well. Uh, let's see here. Let me get this going. Uh, second night, Dave. Uh, well, I know he's I got a clicker there someplace. I've lost mine. So <laughs> we'll just let you see on the screen. I'll say you know, while we're doing this, uh, well, thank you. Uh, I just want to tell you about my good friends at Red Star who support this program and are great in our community as well. Friends that uh, have, have been just there, great stakeholders. So, uh, <clears throat> Red Star Medical Research is a special place. They have a proven reputation. It's the high quality, patient-centered clinical research facility. Red Star brings cutting edge clinical research trials to Ocala in areas like Alzheimer's, psoriasis, osteoarthritis, migraine, fibromyalgia, not just Ocala, but all of North Central Florida, if you're interested in being a part of these, any of these conditions that affect our community like to do these clinical trials, and you can be a part of it. You can actually partake in it. You can go online uh, to redstar.net, find out the details of how to get involved. Since their inception in 1998, Redstar has done more than 700 clinical research trials. Continues to partner with prominent pharmaceutical and biomedical companies throughout the medical industry to give us better help. Red Star Medical Research, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Thank you to our guests tonight, Scott Carter, uh, Kyle Curtis, David Bolton. If you didn't hear, the Gators um, lost a tough basketball game, 54-52, I believe it was. I'm not sure the final score, but they just barely lost it. After a rough start. Have a good evening. Back tomorrow night with the Orange and Blue Blood Thursdays with Ben Troop and the gang. Have a good night, everybody.